Good afternoon, Poké Sports, and welcome to another VGC Battle Stadium Series 12 video, bringing you a Celestila team. Now, Celestila, the Pokémon everyone forgot about the second Regilecki was introduced, was very popular in the metagame, of course, prior to Regilecki. Uh, and before Celestila was in the metagame, there was Corviknight. Now, the Steel Flying type has been notoriously a very strong type in competitive Pokemon for a very long time, so it does make sense why why Dimitri decided to run uh, Celestia, uh, Celestia in the Vancouver Regionals. Now, me and Mike have discussed this on the podcast, but whatever the heck they're drinking up in Vancouver, they had one of the most creative lineups in, like, top 64 of Vancouver, or top 32 of Vancouver. Um, this team got number nine in Vancouver. And of course, I will make sure to link Dimitri's stuff down below in the description. Four times world competitor, so it clearly knows what they're doing. And the thing I love about this team is that this team doesn't try to rewrite the book, right? Every single Pokemon in this team has pretty simple standard sets. Nothing tries to go too out of the ordinary, too crazy. Uh, the Celestial is really the only outlier. And it's actually a, like a no trick room Palkia with just straight, uh, hey, this is my Dynamax. This is how I'm stopping Ogre uh, Palkia, which I found really interesting. So, of course... The rest of the team is pretty self-explanatory. I don't want to get into it too much. We have a Zacian doing Zacian things. A Palkia that's Dynamax. A Whimsicott that has Tailwind and Cotton Spore. Instant that fakes out things. Indeedy that stops other instants from faking out things. And redirects. And then Celestial with Sub and Leech Seed to be the biggest nuisance on the field. So the game plan for today is going to be, hey... Let's always bring Celestial in the back and hopefully we can knock out enough of their Pokemon that Celestial doesn't like until Celestial is the only thing that's left. And then we stall. Sounds like a fun video, huh? Anyway, if you guys are excited to see Celestial here on the channel, go ahead, hit the like button down below and subscribe to Poke Sports if you haven't done so already. With that said, let's get on to today's battles. Kyogre Evil Tall with a Kingdra and Raichu. Okay, thankfully we don't really have an electric move on our team, so the Raichu is kind of meaningless for us. Um, unfortunately, they have two electric types on their team, so Celestia does not appreciate that too much. In fact, Celestia doesn't really appreciate this entire team. There isn't much on their side of the field that we can really resist except for the Rilla. Probably gonna bring it anyway. I think, like, right away, we just have to worry primarily about their... I want to say their Kingdra. I think an Ndidi. Honestly, maybe Ndidi Palkia is going to be a good day, a good way to start off this battle. Bring the Zacian in the back and bring Celestila in the back as well. I think Ndidi is going to be kind of key to victory here. If they lead the Ogre, Ndidi's in trouble for obvious reasons, but the Palkia is able to resist all that. And also, if they lead Rillaboom, the Ndidi can undo the terrain as well. I might even decide to just swap out Ndidi depending on what um, their lead is going to be, but we'll see. thing is, like, if they lead Ogre... I'm probably just protecting Ndidi. I have Protect, right? Yeah, I'm just standard Ndidi. Perfect. There's no need to follow me away, you know, water spout. Okay, Orange Pants, what you got? Rillaboom lead with the Evil Tall. Alrighty. I'm not too upset about this, I'll be honest. I think this is a pretty decent opportunity to just... Just... I guess I just smack the Evil Tall in the face, right? Like, I don't really see an issue here. I just hit Evil Tall with a big old Max Wormwind and call it a day. Lower the attack on the real boom, move on with my life. I like that plan. I like that plan a lot. They don't get grassy terrain, which is nice as well. I kind of want to preserve my Ndidi for as long as I can, if I can. Ooh, should I Helping Hand? I don't think I need to follow me. What if I protect and then next turn helping hand? Uh, let, let me make sure for any fairies. No fairies. Cool. Yeah, we have no reason not to just click Wormwind here. <laughs> it literally does nothing but damage to their whole team. They got nothing to stop Wormwind on that entire team. They are also going to Dynamax. And since they're Dynamaxing first, does mean that they're faster. But of course, a first grader could have told you that Evil Tall outspeeds Palkia. I'm not too concerned about the Palkia, though. I mean, about the Evil Tall, though. Because theoretically, with the plus one special defense boost, I think I might live a dark move through Protect. The whole purpose here is to lower the Rillaboom's physical attack. 
whilst also keeping our Ndidi for another turn in case we need it for another turn. So I, I still think we're going to leave this turn positive as a positive trade. Got two big friends on the field as we go for the protect here. Let's see what the Rillaboom decides to do as well. We'll probably see that after the evil tall though. Just straight up max darkness. I, like I said, that's fine. Yeah, we take like an absolute champion. Beautiful. It's definitely going to be a helping hand next turn, by the way. Because indeed, he definitely doesn't make it out of this turn. The Lord special defense on the Palkid never really helps, but thankfully doesn't mean much for the Rillaboom. See how much this Warm Wind does. Life Orb, Warm Wind. Okay, so helping hand should knock out there is what that means. Fine by me. And a lot lower attack on the Rillaboom as well. Taunt. Taunt Villa. Probably thought I was Trick Room. Oh, I get, I, I, okay. I see how my lead would tell you that I'm Trick Room. I get it. Fine. I'm fair. <laughs> when I lead with a Redirector plus Palkia, yeah, yeah, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> Does seem like a Trick Room there. Regardless, I just want to get rid of the Evil Tall. No safe switch-ins to a Helping Hand boosted Max Wormwind here. Now, I could be in trouble if they just decided to switch things up. Realize that I'm not going to be clicking follow me. And then click max darkness into my now negative one special defense Palkia. But we'll see. What do they switch into? Bringing out the ogre, I guess. Okay. Kind of sucks. I might have to switch out Palkia. Ah, no, I quad resist. I quad resist. But if they're going to get me down to negative two, then I'm only going to be neutral, technically. Oh, no, they just airstream me. That's fine. My Ndidi somehow still lives that. Wow, that's incredible. <laughs> Ndidi OP, baby. All right, let's see what the next little bit of max wormwind damage. This should knock out after the helping hand, surely. Gorgeous. Absolutely wonderful. Wow, I got negative special negative attack on a on a Kyogre. I did it, guys. Now I'm just gonna warn when the ogre. Since they always only lowered my special defense by one, I still think I I'm gonna take this very well. All things considered. Now I'm wondering if I should follow me though, just in case the Rilla decides to come in and grassy glide. I don't know if I care too much though. I mean I could. The Kingdra swap. So I click follow me is what that means. Follow me. Followed by. Who do I take the shot on? I mean, they're both a problem. I'll be honest. I think I'm going to take it on Kingdra, but that's this is such an obvious play. I don't expect my opponent to fall for it. Well, they can't Dynamax, right? So Kingdra just gets one chance. I'd rather knock out the Ogre. Get the Ogre away from its uh, Water Spout or away from its disgusting Water Spout damage. All right, Kingdra's going to go for Draco Meteor. This is the one chance I was talking about. Now Kingdra is negative two. So now Kingdra doesn't scare me at all. This is going to be a single targeted water spout, but remember it's quad resisted. Pretty fair trade if I do save so myself. They're also going to take some life orb chip as well. Here's the water spout. Is going to hurt, but nothing, nothing crazy. Followed by a big old worm wind onto their ogre. Now that's damage. All right, I think, I think Palkia definitely has a fair share of... Uh, it's definitely done its fair share so far. Absolutely so far. All right. Um, next on the agenda, Celestula? I think so. We'll bring in Celestula. It made its appearance. It's here on the channel by itself. Um, are they uh, scarfed? Probably not, considering how they've been playing. So they could just switch the origin pulse and make me a little sad. I'm gonna leech seed over on this side. 
Because I don't think the Rillaboom is going to come out on the other side. Part of me really wants to swap in the Zacian, but then Zacian's going to die. Which is why I think for now I'm going to click Protect. Oh, I can't! The Taunt! That's right! Oof. Well, I guess I'm out of options. <laughs> I'm going to double into this Ogre. They have Yawn? Yawn Kingdra? That's a tech and a half! They do switch the Origin Pulse though, unfortunately. They're going to let me knock out their Kingdra, which I find kind of funny. I mean, their Ogre. Dude, the Yawn though? That's not cool. I'm kind of down to keep the Celesto on the field though, like real talk. I don't think I care too much. I'm surprised I didn't Yawn the Palkia too. I'm gonna- they're gonna dodge the leech seed though? Come on, man. That's not fun. Good news is they're not locked onto negative two stuff. But if they just keep sitting here and yawning things, I'm gonna be a little bit sad about it. I'll be honest. In comes the Rillaboom Bust. Here to make its appearance. Um, I'm gonna still try to fire off a leech seed and then I'm also gonna protect this turn because I have no reason not to. I have the advantage and they have a potential fake out turn here or just a potential grassy glide turn. Might as well not let them take a KO this turn. One, because I'm sleeping and two, they're probably just going to yawn span now that they're negative two. Which is like the real unfortunate thing. Man, it would have been nice to get a leech seed off before because then at least I could have set up a sub and then fallen asleep. But at least I would have been asleep behind a sub. It's fine, though. We knocked out their, their two restricted, which is the important part. We still have both of ours alive. Alive and well, not so much, but they're both alive. They are, in fact, alive. King just switches to Muddy Water. This is negative two Muddy Water, though, but it is in the rain and it's stab boosted. So let's see how much it does. We hang on because Celestila is dumb. Beautiful. Come on, Lee Seed. Nice. Now we get Lee Seed plus Lefties plus we're asleep. The, the sleep part is the bad part, but hey, is what it is. We're at least going to be chipping away on this Kingdra turn after turn. Now, I'm wondering if I should just let the Palkia go down or what I should do just for this free swap. I guess I could always try to double protect. Doesn't matter what I go for here. I guess I will try to double protect. Just to stall another turn of this rain. This rain being up is what stop is what's forcing this Kingdra to. Oh. You had a chance. I think you had a chance. Wait, wait, did the leech see tilt you that hard? <laughs> okay. Nice. Celestula, the Pokemon that tilts the opponent. Got it. Who? Mewtwo Uxie? Carson, what, what is your goal here? What is your plan? I see the Regilecki, which does kind of scare me a little bit because this team doesn't look like it likes Regilecki too much, at least from what I can tell at first glance. I don't know if I'm going to be too excited to give Psychic Terrain to Psychic types, though. I mean, I think a Palkia is still OK here. What if I do Palkia just Palkia whim? Bring Zacian Celeste in the back. We'll see where this goes. <laughs> we'll see where it goes. I mean, this Zaleki is going to be like prim priority target numero uno. Simply because it, I have nothing on my team to really resist it. And a lot on my team are actually weak to it. So if I can knock it out early, then that should, you know, give us an easier game. They're going to leave with the instant and the Zacian. It's definitely not what I was expecting. Well, I think in this situation, I should focus on knocking out the Ensign more than anything, right? The Ensign's going to try to fake out my whim. If that's the case, I'm just going to Helping Hand boost for now. And go for the Worm Wind to lower the Zacian's attack by one. I think that's pretty straightforward. 
They could also try to just like stop my tailwind. It's up to them, right? And this is why helping hand whim is so strong. Is that they either have the choice to stop my Dynamax or stop my Tailwind. They can't have both happen. Because if not, I'm just going to Tailwind next turn and call it a day. I also don't think my Palkia gets one shot here unless Station crits. Typically Palkias are EV to like live at least one. Alright, let's clap for our, our big dragon friend. Here's the fake out now onto the Whimsy. Not going to mean much. Followed by just the Behemoth Blade, probably onto the Whimsicar as well. Okay, so they chose to stop my Tailwind. Which, hey, fine. Kudos. You did it. But you're now going to have a negative one-zation and a dead Ensign. So I think I think that's a pretty good trade. That's a very good trade, honestly, in my opinion. All right, goodbye, Ensign. That means they just lost all the pressure on my Zation. Because the Ensign could put a lot of pressure on Zation. Not anymore. My Zation now has the opportunity to like freely switch in and out as many times as it, you know, it would like to. Um, I think I'm gonna go Celestial here and just start setting up Leech Seeds though. We got rid of one of their fire types. If they didn't bring a Lucky here, I'll be honestly so surprised. That's a Mewtwo, that's not an Lucky. That is definitely not a Lucky. I'm confused. But I think I just keep Wormwinding onto this spot. And then I'll Leech Seed onto that spot. How about that? And I think on our final turn, we'll click Quake. We'll see how this goes, though. They did actually bring the Mewtwo, though. Hey, respect. Hey, Mewtwo holds a special place in my heart. I feel like you guys love seeing Mewtwo also. Because it's like... The two videos I've had using Mewtwo in Series 12. And of course, there aren't a lot of videos using Mewtwo in Series 12. But the two videos that I do have tend to get, like, the most amount of attention. Which is interesting. They're actually going to swap out the Zacian and go into the Regilecki. Okay, so I am happy that I got a Leech Seed off of the Regilecki, not going to lie. I know what's really cool about that. Oh, Thunder. Oh, onto Palkia, though? Oh, no, Celestila. That just one-shot Celestila. Wow. That it honestly very baffling. Very surprising. Did not expect in the slightest. Whoa. Okay, Mewtwo. Not only did Mewtwo connect with the Thunder, it also one shot a Celestial with Thunder. The more you know. Okay, well now it's Zacian versus Zacian, except we still have a Dynamax. They also still have a Dynamax. I'm just wondering what we do here. Do we target the Zation down or do we target the Alecky down? I'm thinking we target the Alecky down because it's faster. And then we'll worry about Zation later. Yeah, I just double the Alecky here. It's a very aggressive battle. Things are just dying left and right. We're down to 2v2, both with full health too. The Zation has to rely on the player off though. Thankfully, we don't have to rely on anything that misses yet. They are going to Dynamax the Alecky, because like, they have no other choice. And they did bring the Alecky, so they are at least a little competent to realize Alecky does kind of go through this team. But hey, man, if Dimitri can get number nine in Vancouver Regionals without seeing a single Alecky, I find that really hard to believe. They're going to go for the Lightning Optimization. Not going to knock me out. Interesting. Don't like that, though. They're going to actually leave my Palkia with health. My Zation is going to outspeed their Zation. Go for the Behemoth Blade here. Big damage onto Lucky. Oh, I didn't know it was going to be that little left. They do connect the play rough onto my path. I thought I could live that. Well, crap. I guess I lose to Mewtwo. Look. <laughs> There is nothing else I could do here. I mean, I guess I could try to predict them to protect with Alecky, but why would they? They have no reason to do that. Yeah, just max lightning into me and I lose. Well then. I mean, kudos to my opponent. Like, they, they knew their win condition was the Alecky and they kept the Alecky alive. What could I, I guess if I just...
Max Quake the Zacian instead of going for the Mewtwo KO. That would have been a little better. I guess also if I didn't just lose my Celestial in one shot, that would have been better too. But hey, GG's. Mian Xiao. That's different. Mian Xiao with an Ogre, Calyrex Ice, and an Urshifu. Looking like a Trick Room is going to happen today. All right. I mean, I guess if they do go Trick Room, Palkia and Zacian are still our bet better two options. Just leading with them right away. They do have Intimidate on their side of the field, but Zacian is still Zacian, so that, that shouldn't matter too, too much. They do have a lot of spread moves. The Ndidi and the Insin kind of seem a little bit sus, even though Insin would do pretty nicely into the Trick Room aspect of their team. You know, I will bring Insin and I will bring Celestial in the back. I'm going to need to knock out this Ogre, though, like as soon as possible. Because this Ogre is going to make my Celestial setting up a lot harder than it has to be. I feel like, honestly, if it's Celestial versus... A very, very intimidated Calyrex Ice, then I should be in a pretty decent position. Otherwise, I might be in trouble. But I hope this is a battle where Celestial can actually do something, because Celestial hasn't been impressing me like all night. If I'm gonna be honest. Alright, well, the, the Protect is gonna happen onto the instant spot if I've ever seen it, right? That's like the most obvious. Not Protect, the, the Fake Out onto the Zacian spot is like the most obvious thing ever. Especially since they probably think that I want to sub up here or something. Um, I'm just going to Dynamax Max Geyser into the Ensign. So at least knock out the Ensign this turn and then I'll hard swap into my own Ensign here. For a couple of reasons. Uh, primary reason numero uno is going to be so that I get a little bit of fake out pressure next turn if I do have that option. And also get the Intimidate off on these two just in case they do want to start doing damage to things. Gonna click the Dynamax button now. I will be able to Worm Wind things next turn. But I think for now, I just want to take out this uh, Ensign. All right, we got the big Palky on the field, folks. Roar, it says. They are just gonna go for the fake out into that Zacian spot. Ensign's going to obviously eat that up for obvious reasons. Max Geyser now onto their own Incineroar. Should just straight knock it out. All right, that's one less Pokemon we have to worry about. And honestly, thank goodness, because Incense can get annoying with the whole switchity swoochities, you know? The swish swooshes don't like it. And now Trick Room is going to be set. Not great news, but not awful news. There is worse news in the world. They send out the ogre. I can parting shot on that, right? Is that just an easy parting shot? Why would they send out ogre? Are they iron ball ogre? I'm a little sussed out by this. I'm anyway, I'm going to go for the worm wind here and I'm going to parting shot. They might dynamax this ogre. We'll see, I guess. Yep, they are. Okay, cool. Uh, is this another game where I sack Celestial, though? I guess so, right? I guess it is. <laughs> but at least it's going to be negative one ogre. Hopefully. Depends on how this turn plays out. All right, I do have speed with the firing shot. Cool. And I'm not going to throw in my station here to die instantly to Ogre. I think uh, I'd rather throw in this Celestial. I mean, that's the issue. I have to choose between my Steel types. And I think I'd rather this one die than Zacian. <laughs> that's just the awful truth. It's just the truth. They do just go for Max Geyser into that spot. They got nothing to lose, so. Yikes, we're going to live, though. Probably a will so I am going to be burnt for what it's worth. I think as my dying breath, the Celestial should just break the neck of the Mimikyu, right? No damage onto this Ogre, but thankfully Ogre can't really do much damage in return to my Palkia. Um, I think I'm going to double the Mimi spot though. I think I want Mimi dead more than anything because I, I don't want them to set Trick Room again. And I think no matter what I do, I'm not going to knock out the Ogre. So I might as well just double into this Mimikyu. One, break its neck. Two, 
break its life. This is assuming that my Celestial underspeeds their side of the field, which it should. Because I think uh, Celestial underspeeds my Ensign. So if the Ensign was the fastest thing on the field with the parting shot, then this should just be also pretty free, I hope. I just gotta whittle down their, their support mons. Once their support mons are gone, hopefully we can stop trick rooms. All right, flash cannon's gonna break your neck. And now, hopefully geyser should break the rest of you. Okay, they're faster and go for lightning. Haunt a Celestia. Celestia was, you could have gone for any other move there. Celestia was gonna go down, I'll be honest. <laughs> but I guess they did show us that they have lightning, which is pretty good information. You always got to worry about information. Celestula, I'm sorry that you were a fodder yet again. They're just will o wisping now because they have no other moves to click, so they might as well get some damage off, I guess. Regardless, I don't want them to trick room later. So, let's get rid of them. That was also my last turn of Dynamax. Now, I have options here. I think I will just bring an instant and I will just taunt their potential trick rumor. Should I parting shot first? If I parting shot, I sack off my Zacian Ogre though. I do get the Intimidate off here, which is nice though. That I can't complain about. I gotta see how many turns of trick room they have left and then I'll decide what I wanna do. Cause I have options here. I think I have more options than my opponent does. At least right now. Right, how many turns are we looking at? We are looking at two turns of Trick Room. So, this means I can protect the Palkia. And I think I'm going to Parting Shot on the Ogre. That way I can make the Ogre negative two and also make the... The Calyrex negative two as well. By switching back in. I'm gonna pocket protect just so I don't have to take massive ogre damage for absolutely no reason. They go for the glacial lance, that should be okay. And she should be able to eat this up. Like it's nobody's business. Like I am gonna lose the Zacian here. Fine. Maybe not. Honestly, negative two ogre might not kill you, Zacian. I don't know if this is like a famous last words kind of thing. But I think I might be able to live. In, an, in a universe somewhere. All right, let's bring the Zacian. Now, all we gotta do is stall this trick room. So if Zacian miraculously lives this turn, which I am having doubts, then we could be in a position to win. Geyser. Yes, okay, 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 good. Good news for us. Because now we bring in Ensign. Get the negative two again. Preserve the Palkia for a little bit longer. Bring in the Ensign. Go for Protect. Protectorization. And let's see how this plays out. No matter what, the Ensign goes down this turn. Unless they miss their uh, water move. I guess is the only way that for some reason Ensign can live. I think the, the key to this victory was just playing Zacian and playing Ensign over and over and getting Parting Shot over and over and then having them be stuck on their last two lawns. They go for the high horsepower into the Zacian spot. Not going to happen today. But by the Thunder. Oh, that means Ensign is living this turn. Big deal. Because now the Chailwind, not Tailwind, Trick Room is going to undo itself. And all we have to do is Fake Out. Fake Out Ogre. Click the Fun button onto their Calyrex Ice. Hopefully they don't have the Beery Berry. They haven't shown us any item yet. Alright, that's fine. That is fine. So we faked out the Ogre for this reason. So that we have another opportunity to click that button is what that means um just in case for some reason i live this 
Oh, they're out of the weather now. Just in case for some reason they live this. Let's see. I taunted that spot too, just in case. They go for the double, they don't get it, so they know that they're gonna die to this, is what that means. They know that they're just gonna insta give. Yep, that's just Zacian doing Zacian things there. Beautiful. Um, we might double die here though to like an Origin Pulse double connecting, but I think in the Palkia versus Kyogre matchup, we should be in a pretty decent position. We really only had to prevent that Trick Room. And we're gonna live with both. Well, you're taunted, I guess. Whatever that does. I mean, it stops them from protecting if that was even an option for them. We only saw them go for like water moves and electric moves. So I'm pretty sure maybe there was a protect in there somewhere. Regardless, I'm going to click parting shot there just in case I somehow managed to live. Um, I'm not going to risk it. I'm just going for a sacred sword. I'm not going to risk a player, a player off miss to like miss out on this much damage. You know, it's still going to do a lot of damage no matter what button I click. I don't need to get a KO yet. Zacian avoids. So I just win. Nice. Woo. All right. We worked really hard to win that one. But the thing is, uh, Another, look, we brought Celestial to every game, which is arguably, like, not something that we should have done. We, like, we put a nice little hindrance on ourselves, and we still won two matches, so not, not too shabby, I guess. Not too shabby at all. Regardless, I think this is pretty straightforward. We click Earth Power not to miss. We click Sacred Sword not to miss. We take the game, and we get another victory today. Battle was canceled as it should be because... Like I said, like, what, what would they be doing there? Absolutely nothing. Anyway, let's go ahead and get you guys a rental code. And here is the rental code for the Celestial team. Now, I said this a couple of seconds ago. I, I'm not impressed yet. <laughs> it literally hasn't done anything but die, but I'm pretty sure in certain situations where there aren't an Aleki and there aren't a lot of Electro types and, you know, Celestial is in the face of the opponent, one-on-one, -on -one, maybe even two-on-one, -on -one, you know, Leech Seed plus Sub plus Protect, can get very annoying and lefties over there can get very annoying very quickly regardless hope you guys did enjoy today's video if you did leave a like and comment down below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already thank you so much dimitri for making this team pu public and congratulations on your ninth place in vancouver regionals um i hope to see more from you in the future and i hope that uh maybe well, some of you guys can uh do some things with celestia let me know how it goes for you down below in the comment section anyway i'm kevin spoke sports have a great night thanks for watching peace out Bye bye